Hi. Today I want to talk about types in Lucy. Lucy or CFML in general is an untyped language. That means that types, the concept of types is just a check that is on top in the language. Not really, the language not really based on types. There are different places where types come into the game in Lucy. One of them are function arguments and return values. In a function, you can define the arguments or the return values with a specific type. In that case, we have defined that this function takes two arguments. One has need to be a string, the name, and the other is a number, that's h, and the function should return a boolean. That function checks if a certain record exists. So it checks here, then it returns if it exists or not. When we execute that function, it works. So nothing special here. When we output the age that need to be a number, as you see here, you see in the dump, that's a number. Then I now change the input into the function to a string. What happens then? It's no longer a number, it's a string. Even we have defined that it need to be a number, but Lucy does not convert the arguments to the specific defined type. It simply checks if it can convert to that type. So for example, when I would write RA here and execute, then it complains that it can convert H15 uh, to a value of type RA. But it actually doesn't convert it if it is possible. So again, when you execute this, it remains a string, it doesn't change. Why is that the case? That for two reasons. First of all, for for performance, we, we don't we only check if we can convert. We don't do it. We only do it if, when it's necessary. And there's another reason that is is this that was made by ACF for backward compatibility. Take for example this example. You have here a function that takes an array, but I don't pass an array into that function. You see here I have a struct. And that struct has the key one. So Lucy can convert a struct to an array or handle it as an array as long the keys are all numbers in the struct. So when I execute that, you see first that we passed in the array, we added a value to the array, then we dump here the array. So we don't return the array, we simply dump the array we had before and you see the dump um, shows the added uh, value if it would convert that to an array and we had would have another object inside the function and outside the function we wouldn't see the change because the original object wouldn't be changed it would be the converted object that only exists inside the function so that's the other reason it only checks if, if it can convert or not, but it actually doesn't convert. That is our functions. The next thing we look into do our CF param. That's the type that exists the longest in the language. So you have, for example, here I have, um, I define uh, that I want to have URL H in this page. It has to be a number. So when I call this code, I first get an exception because I didn't pass URL H inside the, inside the page. When I now add this here, H equal 15, you see it works. When I now Don't need to add a number instead as a say for example old. I get an exception that it can't 
uh, calls all to a number as expected. So, and what you see when I go back and I type in again 15, you also see it is a string. So we have here the same. It doesn't convert that to a number. It simply checks if it can convert it to a number. So it remains as a, a string. Next are queries. Queries are a little bit different. We here have an example. I make an, a query with help of query new and I define that we have again name and age and I define the type string and numeric uh, for these two columns. Then I add two rows, once with, with Susie and once with Heidi the name and one 16 and one's nine. Then I sort the query by age. Output the results and also the metadata of the query. Then execute that. You see, I did sort it by age and it is sorted in the right way because it was was aware that it is numeric and it could sort it the right way. You see also here that um, the, the the column types are varchar and numeric, so it holds that information. What is different with query that it doesn't uh, throws an exception when we break the rule. So we add here a new a new um, row, but in that case we we break the rule. We don't add a number to age. We we add a string that can't be converted to a number. Then we again sort and out dump the result. When we now execute that, you see here, first of all, it couldn't sort it right anymore. It's now sorted as, as a text because of that one is the first. And both columns are now var jar. So when, when you add the new cell to a query and it doesn't match the define a type, it fall back to, to the type that matches all the values in the query. So there's no exception when it doesn't match. That's just the types are here really optional that they are not required. Okay, next is arrays. That's a new functionality coming with uh, Cold Fusion 2018 and Lucy 5.3. At the moment, Lucy 5.3 and Cold Fusion 2018 is still in beta. So it is possible that this feature will change until the final release. So stay tuned. Um, there is one big difference to with, with types, with arrays, than with all other we see, seen so far. But first, how does it look like? We have here, we define with array new, we, we define a new array, then we def say, okay, that array need to have that type. And then we add, so we call the array names, and then we add two names to the array and output it. Then we execute that, you see that works fine. We have the array, and you see also here in the dump, you see that it is for a type string. And, but let's extend that a little bit. Now we add a, a searched uh, value to the array. And in that case, it's, it's a number. So ex when we see the other uh, examples, it, it would keep it a number, but it's possible to convert it to a string. So we would expect a number. But when we execute that now, you see it's also a string. The reason is in that case everything gets converted to the definer type. So it doesn't does not only check if it is possible to convert a type, it actually convert everything to that type. Um, that is how ACF handles it and Lucy at the moment. But like I said, still in beta, maybe that changed. I personally hope that will change in ACF, but we will see and we will in decide in the end how we will handle it. 
but at the moment it converts to that type and when we try to add something that doesn't it's not possible to convert i add a struct in that case we simply get an exception that it can cast a struct to a string also in acf the syntax is a little bit different to the syntax in Lucy, the syntax in ACF looks like this. So instead of this here above, you have this syntax. That syntax is not possible because Lucy supports that you can not call uh, component functions with brackets. Uh, I have made another video about that that explains that in detail. You can check that if you're interested. So I hope also ACF will change that syntax until the final release also because I think it's adapted from Java with the generic types but in my opinion it makes not really sense because uh, we only have it with that function it would make sense when we have it everywhere but when we have it only with that function I don't think it makes sense but we will see uh, how this will be handled in the future the next one is query param query param is not really uh, a type conversion in the language it's more it converts the type to send it to JDBC I don't make an extra example here I assume you are familiar with that okay next thing are literals a literal is a simple type that is defined in the code take this example you see here I define a literal boolean a little literal string and a literal number and Lucy honors this type. So when, when, we, when we dump that, you see it's a boolean, a number, and a string. ACF is different here. It, in ACF, everything is a string because all literals, all simple literals are converted to string. That changed with Cold Fusion 2018. So Cold Fusion 2018 now handles that the same way as Lucy. But maybe you ask you yourself now, why does that matter? Um, I will show you. First of all, take this example. Here I take the number I have defined above, and then I make a mathematical operation on that, and the output the result. And here I use it for the if uh, condition, the Boolean value, in when we would convert everything to a string, Lucy first has to convert that back to a number to make the mathematical operation. Or here, um, convert it first back to a Boolean to make the Boolean operation. So that would be slower. Because of that, Lucy always keep the define a type because we assume that it could be used when I define a number. I assume that it could be used for a later for a mathematical operation or when I define a boolean it could be used for a if test so it makes sense to keep that type that was the initial idea because we make did make that different to ACF but there is also another reason so by the way when we execute that of course it's nothing unexpected here simply get the outputs but there's another reason when you for example pass values from cfml to other language that where the type matters so like in that case i make i convert the, the struct we have to the json string then that matters so let's see the result when i do that you see here in the result the boolean is a boolean in the json string the string is a string and the number is a number when in ACF in older versions this would be everything strings and that could of course cause problems with with JSON later on that's about literal types next is converting uh, like I said Lucy is untyped that means Lucy can auto convert everything that is necessary so for example when you define a string and you pass it to a function that uh, expect the a number Lucy will try to convert it automatically so you don't have to take care on that so when we look into that in detail when I execute that you see I getting back a date object and 
So Lucy did convert that string automatically to a date. Let's play a little bit with that. For example, here we now take the date and I make a mathematical operation with that. So it, Lucy need to convert the date to a number that it can achieve that. So it is plus one when we execute that. You see, I get the number that, that are the days, uh, the days since uh, 18 something. So when we go, go forward and then we have now this number, then we again call the function date at and we uh, pass in that number and, and date at is expecting a date. It will convert the number uh, back to a, to a date. So when we execute that, you see it's again, it's a date and now it's one day more. So you see we first converted to a, a string to a date, then a date to a number, then a number to a date. And Lucy did that uh, everything automatically without we had to, to help or define anything. So everything is auto converted. That is with, with the language itself, with built-in functions or mathematical operation. And you also can do that when you interact with Java libraries. For example, this Java library, I loading the class a string builder and I pass a string into the constructor and output that. You see, I get here a string builder and it contains that value. Now I can call that string builder Let's first check the, the Java doc of that string builder. You see that's the Java doc for string builder. And you see the string builder has a method called substring. And that method takes as argument the int. So we call that method, but we pass in a string, not an int. When we do that, you see it works. It uh, gets that substring, so it converted the the uh, string five to in because it checked what does the method expect and converted automatically to the type the method is expecting. You can also do that explicitly. In that case, it doesn't really is necessary. So you can say, okay, I want to convert that with the help of the function Java cast to an int, so it's, it's clear what type you want. So when you execute that, you get the same result. So it's more explicitly. In that case, it's not necessary, but there are other cases where it gets necessary. Take that example you have here again, I call the constructor of string builder with help of init. When we check the Java doc for that class, we see it has two constructors. It's a, it has a constructor that takes a string and it has one that takes an int, so that it defines the capacity or it is a value that is already filled into the string builder. So when we execute this code, you see we have we have a, a number. So Lucy auto detects the, the, the nearest the, the constructor that makes the most sense. So when we execute that, and let me make the dump. When we execute that, you see we don't have any value because it was used as capacity. Because it took the, the constructed the nearest one that makes the most sense that, that has the best match to that type. When we now change to to a string, it will take the other constructor that takes a string as an input and you get that is then used as a value. So but maybe you want to make sure independent of, of the the type of the value you pass in that you the right constructor is called. In that case, you Java cost makes sense. So you have here, let's say you define you want to have it int and 
what it is a string, but you want to have the, the define it as a capacity. So when you execute that, it works. You see, even it was is a string, it is converted to int. So here, Java calls make sense. So this was about how Lucy auto convert types. But this only scratches the surface. There is a lot more going on in the code. But that's the good thing. You don't have to think about it. It doesn't matter in most cases for you. It's good to, to know, to understand how it works. Also to prevent performance problems. But normally don't have to, to think too much about it. Uh, like I said in the beginning that the types in the language are really just checks that are on top of the language. So maybe when you have a lot of type checking, it makes sense that you disable this checking. You can do that in the Lucy administrator. You can under performance caching, you can disable the type checking only for the UTF. For UTF type checking, you can disable that functionality. So it no longer checks um, if the types are correct. That makes sense that you may be in, in the development environment, you have it enabled to make sure, but on the public environment, you disabled it because it's no longer matters for you. It's just matters when you program your application, but when it's in, in use, the type checking is no longer necessary. So you save time there. I hope this video was helpful to you. Have a good one.